on, I know if you all know these lyrics. <laughs> I see a couple folks clapping. I know you confused. Like, why is Santa Claus at Journey Church on Sunday morning? Because Santa brings gifts. Come on, y'all got to sing this chorus out. Oh, I hear you. Come on. Anybody put their hands together? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm having entirely too much fun up here with you all already. So obviously, I've come up here. I've got my Santa hat on. I've got my bag. And we've got some things that we need to do, some things we need to take care of today because I want to challenge you in some areas that I believe God wants us to be aware of. And I want you to just start off just real quickly. Just tell like two or three people around you, say Merry Christmas. Anybody just say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Now, I am blessed. I have a seven-year-old in my house, and it has absolutely changed my life. It really has. And one of the great joys that I have is Christmas. And there's something about Family, being around and being able to take the time to really pour into and care for the time that you have. But also, let's be honest, as a parent, watching your kids open up the gifts, it does something to you. It does something. It, watching my daughter come running out of her room to the Christmas tree for gifts that I know I, I sacrificed for for gifts that I know I saved up money for, for things that I know when she opens it, the smile on her face is going to be huge because it's just the thing she's always wanted. It's the thing that she's always needed. It's the thing that I know is going to bring some joy to her life. Depending on what the gift is, it might bring some joy to her friend's life. And it does something wonderful in my heart to watch my child start tearing open the box and pull that thing out like, yes, I've been asking for this all year. And I'm like, yes, and I've been saving for that all year. <laughs> but I want you to imagine something with me for a moment. And I want you to imagine, what if my daughter jumped up on Christmas morning and came running out of the, her bedroom and came into the living room with, under the Christmas tree, gave me a big, huge hug and wrapped me all in a great embrace, gave me a kiss, and then told me, but daddy, I don't want your gifts. What if she ignored them? What if she said she didn't want them? And I tried to point at her and say, hey, mommy and daddy got you some stuff. Like, open it. No, daddy, I'm good. I don't really want that. I don't need any gifts. I don't, I don't want, and I'm thinking, hey, wait a minute. No, I sacrificed a lot. <laughs> daddy could have got a few more of his own toys. I did this for you. There's some things in here that's going to make your life better. You're going to need some of this stuff. I want you to open the gifts. And she says, no. That would make me look at Christmas a little different. And I might feel some kind of way about that because I know what I put into making this experience for her, but she's refusing to open my gifts. I want to read a scripture to you. And this is in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 through 8, and then 11 through 12. And it says, this God has given to each of us grace in full measure. According to the anointed's gift, as the scripture says, when he ascended to the heights, he, being Jesus, put captivity in chains. And in his triumph, in his victory, he gave gifts to the people. It was the risen one who handed down to us such gifted leaders, some emissaries, some prophets, some evangelists, as well as some pastors, teachers, so that God's people would be thoroughly equipped to minister and build up the body of the anointed one. I'm convinced today, church, that the way I would feel on Christmas morning if my daughter refused to open her gifts is the way God feels about us. Every Sunday morning that we get up, run into his living room, lift our hands, tell him how much we love him, and then say, but I don't want your gifts. And God says, wait a minute, I sacrificed my son for this. 
I gave up everything I loved. I loved you so much. I put so much into these gifts. And you're telling me you don't even want them? That you refuse to even open it and see what it is? Do you not know that my gifts will bring you joy? Do you not know that not just joy for you, but for the people around you, other people are going to benefit by the gift that I have given you? Merry Christmas. I'm here today to talk to you for a few moments. And the topic of today is stop ignoring your gifts. Let's pray, church. Dear God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for how you do this. God, I pray that you will help me to speak audibly, speak clearly your word today, God. I pray that you will use me, use my gift, use my experience. I pray, God, that we will receive and hear from you today and be moved to a course of action. Help us, God, to achieve everything you've called us to be, utilizing the gifts that you've blessed us with. In Jesus' mighty name, everyone say amen. 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 In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, everybody ready? Merry Christmas. Verse 7, verse 4 through 7 says, Now there are many kinds of gifts, but they are all from the same Spirit, and there are many different ways to serve. But they are all directed by the same Lord. There are many amazing working gifts in the church, but it is the same God who energizes them all in all who have the gifts. Each believer has received a gift that manifests the Spirit's power and presence. Isn't that crazy? It says that the gift is given for the good of the whole community, and this is where God comes in. God has meticulously put this body together. He placed each part in the exact place to perform the exact function that he wanted. There are many different gifts, but it's the same spirit. Many different gifts in the church, but they all operate under the same God. The Greek word for gift is defined as a spiritual endowment a religious qualification or something that we considered essential or beneficial. It is a grace denoting extraordinary powers. All right, y'all, I'm going to tell on myself, I am a Marvel fan to my heart and core. I have been reading comic books and watching X-Men and looking at Spider-Man as far back as I can remember. So when they decided to make real-life action movies, I was in heaven. Oh, and when Spider-Man No Way Home came out and they put all the Spider-Men in one movie, I was a grown man in the movie theater. Yes! Yes, it's Tobey Maguire. I was that guy. Because growing up, I always wanted superpowers. Who doesn't want superpowers? I wanted to be that guy that could bust into rooms and save people's lives and beat up the bad guys and shoot lasers from my eyes. And Superman was unfair. He had all the gifts. I'm like, can you just give me one? I wanted to be them. I struggled with Batman, though, y'all, because Batman ain't got not one superpower at all, but he still fight with, I don't understand. Batman should have been dead a long time ago, but that's just my personal opinion. That's why I don't rock with DC like that. I'm sorry, all the DC fans. Marvel only here, okay? (laughs) We pray for your salvation later. (laughs) But I wanted superpowers. I wanted to be extraordinary. I wanted to have something about me that was different, something that would make a difference, something that could change people's lives. And then I grew up and I got into this word and I found out that Jesus says in this word that every believer, if you have believed on Jesus Christ, it says in this Bible that the Holy Spirit has given you a superpower. Come on, some of y'all ain't happy enough about this. You have a superpower. God has blessed you with a grace. He's given you the ability to do something incredible. And it says that these gifts are energized by God himself. Like, can you imagine that? 
I not only have a power, it's a power that is energized by God himself, a God who is all-powerful, a God who never runs out of creativity, a God who never runs out of power to hand over to me, a God who will never sleep, who never slumbers, who never forgets, who always keeps his word, and he says, I will not only give you a gift, I will be your power source for it. So when you feel like you're at the end of your rope, tap into my power because I got plenty more to give you. These are the gifts that God has blessed us with. And on Christmas Day, he says, come into the church journey and open up the gifts. Now, why does God say he energizes these gifts? Again, in his word, he says it is for the benefit of, of the entire community. Your gifts are for the benefit of the entire community. Your gifts are for the benefit of the entire community. Every person in this room, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He blesses you with a gift. He says, I empower that gift so that it will be a benefit for the entire community. Why is that important? because we face a very great enemy named Satan. And Satan has some tricks up his sleeve. Satan likes to use something called stumbling blocks. See, for many of us as believers, Satan knows I probably can't get you to totally give up on God. I probably can't get you to curse him and die. I probably can't get you to just completely turn around and go a whole opposite direction. So what I would do instead is just try to trip you up enough to keep you off balance from achieving his perfect will in your life. So we recognize the term of a stumbling block. The Bible even tells us that we as people should not be stumbling blocks to our brothers and sisters in Christ. We should be careful of the decisions that we make lest we cause someone else to stumble and fall. But you all, let me give you some examples of some of the stumbling blocks. We know of things that Satan will use. He'll use finances. <laughs> Satan will use sin, absolutely. Yes, he will. He will drop sin off. <laughs> Bootleg family. He'll use some of them. Oh, wait a minute. I think Santa got a few more in the bag. Hold on a minute. Santa got a few more, a few more gifts and toys and, and other things in here. He will use things that you might not even recognize. Maybe you have kids that won't sit still doing church service. <laughs> you got some teenagers in your house that absolutely hate going to your church. You feel like the church is full of hypocrites. <laughs> Stumbling blocks. You struggle with a lack of love. You've been hurt by previous churches. You've had things said to you that have left a scar in your life, and it's hard for you to trust and believe that God is actually who he says he is. Some of us love good music, and you know what a stumbling block is for those of us? Coming to a place with folks singing off-key all day, every day. <laughs> if I had more stumbling blocks, I'd throw three or four out on that one. <laughs> Going to a place where you're unable to hear the pastor speak, that's a stumbling block. Walking through the door and people are not happy to see you coming, that's a stumbling block. The first time you show up and you got a hat on and the first person to see you tells you, you can't wear that in here, that's a stumbling block. Teachers that get up to give messages that totally don't keep your attention and have no relevancy to the world or to real life, stumbling block. Things that we know and recognize and understand, things that, according to the definition of a stumbling block, these are things that keep people from walking into the church and hearing about the gospel of Jesus Christ. These are the things that, even if you do happen to get into the church, may cause you to lose some of your faith in the power of Jesus. But God says to everyone in this building, I have blessed you with a gift. 
I have energized that gift for the benefit of the entire community. Why is that? Because there are stumbling blocks throughout people's lives, and God has gifted some of you to be able to pick some of these up. Oh, it's quiet. And I hope that means because you're listening and not sleep. Because you understand that when you have a gift and someone has those children that can't be still, won't be quiet, and the stumbling block is, I would rather stay home than try to interrupt service with my child. But the stumbling block is your gift. You can pick it up because I've got a gift with children. And I'm willing to serve and journey kids to help have a place for your child to go. Why? Because I already know Jesus. I already have him in my life. I'm already ready to give back the gift he's given me. So I will pick up your stumbling block. I thank God for people like Mandy. Pastor Mandy comes in here and sings her face off. Own key, yes, God. Oh, bless Jesus. I'm picking up two on that one. It's a gift. The musicians who are playing all in harmony. Have you ever gone to hear a band where nobody was in tune and everybody is off beat? That will send you out of the church. <laughs> There's a blessing in utilizing your gift because using it picks up the stumbling blocks. You can hear me really well right now. Why? Because there's a gifted somebody sitting on top of this stage up here that is running sound so you can hear my lovely voice. There are campuses. We have a campus in Lithuania. We have campuses all across Wisconsin who are watching me on a screen right now because there are people on the cameras utilizing their gifts to pick up the stumbling blocks that would keep someone else from knowing who Jesus is that maybe couldn't make it to the church today, that maybe has a disability that has them bed bound, that maybe has a sickness and they're in the hospital. But you know what they can do? They can pick up their phone. They can pick up their computer. They can turn on their laptop and they can tune into what God is doing in the church because there's somebody using their gift to pick up the blocks. You're gifted. You're gifted. You're gifted. And the gift is not for you. <laughs> the gift is meant for the better meant and the benefit of the entire body of Christ. Amen, church. So Satan wants to use the stumbling blocks to keep us from God. Our job is to use our gifts to make the way clear for anybody that wants to get to Jesus. We are using our gifts in our separate areas, and we are cleaning up the walkway so that when people decide they want to come to Jesus, the walk is easy. We are the church that makes it easy to find and experience God. So how dare you utilize that tagline, walk into this room, knowing the gifts that God has given you, lift up your hands, tell him how much you love him, and then sit down on those same hands and refuse to open the gift. How much do you love me if you reject my gift? I remember Ooh, I'm going to get in trouble for this one, but I'm going to tell it. My wife and I almost wasn't wife and I. <laughs> I had to propose two separate times, you all. The first one didn't go as planned. <laughs> but I got you, baby. I got you. It took a minute. <laughs> I took that girl down to the lakefront. I had it planned out. Down to the beach. The stars was out, looking like these lights above my head right now. The moon was glancing off of the, the ocean. I call it the ocean. It's Lake Michigan, y'all. Look, when you try to be romantic, <laughs> you try to be romantic, you call it the ocean, okay? You can't be like, come on down and see this great-looking Lake Michigan. That don't sound right. We had gone out for a date. I spent quite a bit of money. <laughs> and I remember getting her down there. I had it set up. She's looking at the ocean. <laughs> And I got on one knee, and I pulled my ring out, and she turned around, and I saw the look of horror on her face. 
<sighs> and that's when the argument started. <laughs> Oh, we argued, and we fought all the way home. Because see, first of all, I'm offering you my gift, and you rejected it. This gift means a lot to me. I put everything I had into that gift. I was still paying on that gift. <laughs> Some of y'all know what layaway is. You know, you didn't have all that money up front. <laughs> How much a month can I pay on this, please? Thank you. <laughs> when she said no, I was crushed. And then all I could think about was, and now I've got to drive you back home? <laughs> In my car? You ever had a moment you want to be like, hey, I don't know how you get home tonight, but uh, you probably should have told me no after we got there. <laughs> hey, she told me no. And in rejecting my gift, I felt like she rejected me. And she tried to explain it. It's not that I don't care about you. It's not that I'm not enjoying who we are and what we have. I'm just not ready for that yet. But in my mind, if you don't want my gift, you don't want me. I'm hoping that naturally this is making some sense so that we can understand this spiritually, that when you reject God's gift that he sacrificed everything for to give to you, and he's on his knee in front of you saying, hey, will you accept this? And you say, no, I'm not ready yet. Is it possible that God feels like maybe you're rejecting him? Because you've rejected the gift that he is offering you. There are in this word, it tells us that these gifts should be exercised. We should exercise the gifts we've been given. Why is that? Because he says that he places people in the body as he sees fit. And if God, being as smart as he is, having all power in his hands, has given you a gift that he says he energizes for the benefit of the entire community, says, I put you in the body where he sees fit, then that's because there is a problem in the body that your gift is here to solve. There's a stumbling block somewhere in the body that your gift is here to pick up. There is a way that needs to be made clear for those that need to get to Christ that he has energized and anointed you to be in that space so that you can make way for the king of glory. And we miss the opportunities to change people's lives when we refuse to use our gifts. You all, as a pastor, I am blessed. I get to serve on a weekly basis with some amazing people at the Beach Park campus, but there are some weeks I walk into the room and I don't want to be there. I've lost some loved ones. I've had a hard week. I've had some difficulties, and I'm struggling. There's times when I feel like God is not speaking. He's not showing up. He's not telling me anything, and he's not even answering my prayers, and I walk into the room trying to have faith, but feeling faithless. And there are people who have gifts, and we benefit because they operate in their gifts. And I've got a lady, and I'm going to call her out right now. Her name is Grandma Nancy. And that's how she introduced herself to me. I am Grandma Nancy, and I'm here to love you. Thank you. I need more grandmas in my life. Thank you very much. Grandma Nancy has a gift of a prophet. She works in the prophetic. So there are times when I've been battling with God, trying to get an answer out of him, and I feel like he's ignoring me, and here comes Grandma Nancy with a little piece of paper in her hand, and she'll just walk up, give me a hug, and put it in my hand and say, God told me to give you this. She has not missed one time. Every time I open that little letter, Grandma Nancy is so on point with exactly what I'm going through and exactly what I'm needing, and her prophetic gift builds me back up and at least tells me there's a God who is paying attention, who knows what I'm going through, and I'm not by myself. She's gifted. There's another young lady in our church. Her name is Shianta Myers, and she's got a gift of exhortation. Hey, she's on the worship team. And she's not leading the songs, but when the time comes for God to move and he's got something he wants to say, there's times as a pastor, I'm sitting there and I'm watching the Holy Spirit work and I'm like, ooh, I feel like God wants to say this. 
Can I tell you something, church? Because of the giftings in the room, I don't have to move. All different gifts under the same God. He's orchestrating everything. We just have to submit ourselves to him. So as I start to feel a certain message climbing up in my spirit, I'm like, God, look, hey, Shianta already up there with the mic. Give it to her. And next thing I know, here comes Shianta grabbing the mic. And she is giving it to people no different than I would, no different than anyone else would. She is using her gift. And the body benefits. I've got a gentleman that just returned from a, a, a hospital recovery, thank God, I want to thank God for the, the miracle that is, that is Mr. Alvin. You all don't have a clue, but God has kept him and has brought him. Literally, the doctors are like, we don't know why you're even still here. The first time I met Alvin, I had so much fun in a five-minute span. It was the first time at the church. We laughed like we had known each other for years. And the next week, he came back, and I'm like, I don't know, it just feels something, something crazy. Every time I talk to you, I feel better <laughs> about myself, about life, about what's happening, about what's going on at the church. I feel better. By the third time I talked to Alvin, he wasn't even technically a member of the church yet. Hadn't gone through growth track, nothing. And I was like, Alvin, you need to be a greeter. Because <laughs> as good as you make me feel in four and a half minutes just standing around with you, do you know what you could do for people, person after person after person that is coming through the doors? Understand this. We want you to serve, yes, but more than serve, we want you to use your gift. Don't just serve anywhere. Find what your gift is and utilize that for the benefit of the body. We want to release you into that today. We want to help you understand that your gifts are needed and necessary. You all, as a teenager... God told me he had a gift for me. And can I tell you something? I didn't want to open it. I didn't want to open it. I was scared of what was in the box. I was scared of what the responsibility would be. I was scared of what people would feel about me. I was scared that it might be something that I would hate doing, something that I would never want to spend the rest of my life being a part of. I was scared that he might actually use me in a way that I didn't want to be used. So I put the gift down, and I said, I'm good. I've got other things that I can do. I've got other talents, and I'll happily build your kingdom utilizing this other stuff that I have. But the problem was that my other talents were not energized by God. So I got tired. I got burnt out. My testimony in a nutshell, at the age of 21, I was married, living in a parsonage, had basically no bills, and God was, in my mind, totally blessing me with everything that I ever needed, everything that I ever wanted, and then because I was not operating in the gift that he told me to, I was operating in my talents, I was operating out of my own will, I lost everything. By the age of 27, I went through a divorce. I had to start all the way over. I was back living with my grandparents in an eight by 10 foot bedroom in the upstairs of their home. And I remember laying on the floor of that room telling God, I'm sorry. I've tried to do this on my own. I've tried to do this by myself. I've tried to do this in my own power. I don't know if you can even use me anymore. But whatever you have for me, I'm willing to do it. I will say yes to whatever you want me to do. And he said, Open the box. He told me to open the box. Because God says that his gifts are without repentance. He said it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how much you've messed up. It doesn't matter how people are looking at you. It doesn't matter how long you've run away from it. It doesn't matter. None of that matters because what I've called you to be, what I've called you to do, I planted that in you before the foundations of the world. And my gifts are without repentance. I am not sorrowful. I am sorrowful that you went through that. I'm sorrowful you made those decisions. But now that you are ready, open the box. Church, every last one of you have a gift. And God says, open the box. See what I've given you. See what I've blessed you with. 
See what I've bestowed upon you. See how you become a benefit to the body. Some folks are like, but I don't know. I I don't know what to do. I'm scared. Don't be scared. It's Christmas morning. Your father loves you. He has sacrificed to give you a gift that you will never be more happy than when you decide to open it and use it. And I'm telling you, open up the box. I remember distinctly crying out to God and finally telling him, yes. And for me, he said, you will be my mouthpiece. You will speak about me. You will be my witness. You will tell people about the goodness of God. You will challenge. You will see injustice and speak out on it. You will attack racism at the root because it's not of God. He said that you will use your mouth and your voice to bring me glory. I had been so scared of the gift in the box, but when I finally opened it, I have never been more fulfilled. I have never been more excited. I have never been more happy than when I'm using the gift that he has given me to share with other people what God has done in my life, how he restored me, how he blessed me with a wife and a daughter and a family, brought me back into the church, somehow made me a pastor and planted me right back on the stage and said, my gift is without repentance. Can I tell you something, church? My gift is no different and no better than yours. I'm just finally in my place where I fit. This is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to encourage you today to get out of your seats and to use your gift, to open your box. And now, can I be honest with y'all, since I know what's in the box and I know the benefit of what's in this box, oh, I carry this box with me everywhere I go. Oh, wait a minute. You want me to do what? You want, you want me to say something? Hold on a minute, because I'm ready for you. Why am I ready for you? Not because I'm so good, not because I'm so smart, not because I'm so talented, because I'm gifted to do this. The Bible says that your gift manifests the very power and presence of God. So every time I speak, I expect God to bring forth fruit, not because of me, because his word says that I am energized, I am anointed to use this gift in this box, and that whenever I do it, giving him glory, he says, I will show up and manifest my power and my presence. What would it look like, Journey Church, if every person in here opened their box and manifested the power and presence of God in every space you go in? I don't believe there will be enough chairs in all of this building to hold the overflow of people. I want to challenge you today. It's time to get out the seats. It's time to open your box. It's time to use your gift. God is telling you, Merry Christmas. Get up out of the bed. Run in this living room and open up the gifts. Use what I've given you. Manifest my power, manifest my presence. Let's take it to all of Kenosha. Let's take it to all of Wisconsin. Let's take it to all of our nation. Let's take it around the world. He has gifted us to do so. But we can't do it on our own. You need what's in the box. (laughs) You know what's even crazier? Some of you have multiple boxes. Some of you have multiple gifts. And just like they said in that Marvel movie, with great power comes great responsibility. You have even more responsibility. What will you say when you stand in front of an all-perfect God and he starts looking through the list of the gifts that he blessed you with and you only use one of them? You know you're gifted with teenagers. Why are you not serving a journey youth? You know that they love you for whatever reason. You try to get away from them and they follow you everywhere especially the knuckleheads, they really love you. And you're like, why? I don't want to talk to you. And they be looking for you. I just need to talk to you. I just feel like I can. It's because you're anointed. 
You know you can sing. You know you love to sing. You know that when you sing, fruit happens. People are changed. People understand that God is in the room. But you would rather sit out here and watch than get in the game? Use your gift. Some of you have a gift for protection. You have great instincts on watching people. We need security personnel across our campuses, men and women. Because you ladies know, y'all see stuff we don't notice. I know my wife needs to be the chief of security. She notice all type of stuff I don't see. <laughs> According to her, I'm blind. So. <laughs> y'all, I'm going to need somewhere to sleep when I get home tonight. So hopefully one of y'all gift is a cot for me because I'm probably in trouble. <laughs> Use your gift. We need people on these cameras. We need people doing graphics. We need people helping us market this wonderful thing called Journey Church because I believe it is one of the best churches you could ever be a part of. I believe that with all my heart. We need you. Our children need to be reached. Do you know just here at this campus, you got over 500 kids sitting around here between the two services? We need more people to help. Some of you right now are taking up a chair that somebody else should be sitting in. Why? Because you should be serving. You shouldn't even be in this chair. You'd have been in that chair for 19 years. You know who Jesus is. Get up. <laughs> but Pastor Jay, I need to be fed. No, you need to stop being fed and feed somebody else. Sitting in here obese spiritually. What does that look like? You do not get extra credit points for eating up all the word, okay? Get out of the chair and be utilized by God to remove some stumbling blocks from someone else's life. This room should be full. We should be forcing Pastor Kevin to have to figure out how to do three services here because we got so many folks coming and so many people are serving that we don't know what to do with you. That should be our problem. Across our campuses, that should be our problem. Why? Because people like me is walking around with my box looking for an opportunity. I'm bold enough to ask you if I can use it. If I see a need, I say something. Because this is my gift, but what is yours? And Pastor Jay, I don't know what my gift is. Can I tell you something? That's still no excuse. We have this wonderful thing here, a journey called Growth Track. Well, we will give you a gift assessment, walk you through it, help you find out what your specific giftings are, and show you areas of the church where you would fit help you get started. But we can't force you to do anything. Because even once you know your gift, even once you have your box, even once you open it and realize what's inside, it is now still your choice whether you use it or not. But I believe that I'm talking to a bunch of people in here today who are tired of sitting down, who are tired of not being in the fight, who are ready to be drafted into God's army, ready to reach more people for Christ, ready to see more children speaking in tongues, ready to see more teenagers coming to the knowledge of who Jesus is in their life, ready to see this place full of people crying out for more of God because you are willing to manifest his power and his presence wherever it is that he may plant you. Amen. So if you're in this room today, and I am not talking to all of you, because some people might feel like, Pastor Jay, I'm not ready to open my gift. I'm not ready to give that full commitment. That's fine. Please tune me out for the next two and a half minutes. I would appreciate that. But for the rest of you that feel like this is talking to you, and you know you've got a box that has a gift, and you haven't been utilizing it, and you haven't been offering it up to the body of believers for the benefit of what God wants to do, I am inviting you right now, just stand up on your feet. You don't have to move. You don't have to go anywhere. Just stand up right now. Pastor Jay, I have a gift that I want to use. Thank you. Thank you. It always takes the first person to stand up. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Jay, I'm gifted. I know what my gift is. I know what I'm called to do. And God is challenging me. If you are across these campuses, you should be standing up. I'm talking to you as well. Stand up in your rooms if you have giftings that you know God has called you to. 
I am challenging you to come out of the chairs and serve. But don't just serve, use your gift. I am challenging you to not just fill a place, but to manifest the power and the presence of God through what he's given you.